Well, hello, welcome back to Claiborne. Welcome to Missouri. I'm very, very happy that you're here. So if you live um, in a place where um, you have large properties, large parcels of land, like I do here in Missouri, I'm gonna take around, I'm gonna show you a couple of common problems and then just suggest some solutions to those problems. And then we're gonna talk about sumac. down your trees and you don't plant anything back that's going to hold that grass in place um, then you get something like this which is erosion if they were to plant a line of sumac along there that would help hold all of that soil in place and give a nice place for wildlife to exist and then if you plant something that's overwhelming I'll show you what's a problem with that Okay, and this, this is a different neighbor. This is um, not for erosion, but this was done for privacy. So he planted for Scythia out front and it has gotten massive. Um, it's a good size plant for privacy for his ground. It doesn't overwhelm, but he's had to have people come out here and it's taken days and days of chainsaws to try and get it back under control. It just became massive, out of control. It was covering his driveway. It was encroaching on the street. It just gets so overwhelmingly huge that he has to deal with that every few years. And now this year, because it was cut back so severely, um, it, I, it, I didn't see a single bloom on it this year. So maybe if he would have planted um, something more along the lines of native sumac, it might have gotten tall enough without becoming overwhelming. So when I first found sumac on my property, I was a little panicked thinking that it was his for Scythia had somehow gotten onto my land, but it's not, mine is fragrant sumac. So let's go up and look at sumac now. And so here's my latest discovery on my property, which I'm very happy about. Happy to learn that it was not for Scythia. When I started to see these little yellow blossoms, I literally panicked. <laughs> so this is a uh, fragrant sumac. It is a member of the Anacardiaceae family or the cashew family. It's native to Missouri. It's native, it grows in all lower 48 states, um, except for the most southern parts of Florida, I believe. So these little flowers come out on the end of the stems before the leaves ever show up, which I think is very cool. So it's it's a food source for very early butterflies. And it's a nice um, low-lying shrub or small tree, however you want to call it. It is um, generally between two and five feet tall. So the bark. When it first starts out, I don't know if you can see this, it's sort of a dark brown and it's very smooth at first. But as it gets older, the bark will appear cracked and with um, very visible pores in it. Flowers are very pretty. They're five petaled flowers. The main plant will spread out to around 10 feet wide. So it's non-invasive, so it doesn't, it kind of stays put. It kind of stays where you plant it without getting overwhelming like for Scythia. Um, it is also um, the host plant for the red banded hair streak butterfly. And what's really cool about it is these leaves, when the leaves do come out, they're gonna be a beautiful red, deep red. There'll be some purples and some bright orange in it when the leaves fall off in the fall. They lay on the ground. The plants themselves are um, nectar food for the hair streak butterfly. And then the leaf litter below, you'll definitely want to leave that because that's where she's going to lay her eggs. And her um, 
caterpillars will overwinter in the leaf litter down below. So for people like me who don't want to rake, it's perfect. I can say, well, I'm not going to rake that. You know, I've got baby butterflies growing in there. So it's beautiful for that. Absolutely beautiful. Um, it is fragrant. Uh, these little flowers smell a little bit, but not that much. But the fragrance is actually in the bark and in the leaves themselves when the leaves come out. Now it is a cousin of poison ivy, but it is completely non-poisonous. Um, there is a certain variety where you can actually make a pink lemonade from the berries. Um, and these berries are a, a favorite of a birds and other wildlife. So that is Ruse um, Aromatica or Fragrant Sumac. Absolutely gorgeous and I'm thrilled that that's what's on my property and not for Scythia. All right, guys, hopefully this will help you help you make choices. Um, if you have um, some privacy issues or some erosion, erosion issues on your property to stop and think, you know, how invasive is this thing going to get that I'm going to plant? And what's nice about these is, like I said, it's non-invasive. They don't generally grow out their, um, their colonies bigger than about, whoops, got you out of focus, focus, uh, about 10 feet, uh, which is just about what this colony here is. And that's probably about as wide as this colony is going to get. And if I want more, I would have to plant another sapling on down. And it really does become very thick, and it's it's just uh, it's just an all-around really cool plant, and it's native to Missouri. All right, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this, and I will be bringing you more plants as I make those discoveries later on throughout the summer. Much love and light. Blessed be.